Hello, my name is Helen Beebe. I'm Professor of Philosophy at the University of Manchester. I'm going to be talking about the great Scottish philosopher of the 18th century, David Hume, and in particular about some of the famous views and arguments that he puts forward in his inquiry concerning human understanding. We're going to be looking at induction, causation, freedom of the will, and belief in miracles. But before we get on to those, I need to say a little bit about Hume's basic starting point, and so I'm going to talk a bit about Hume's views about reason and experience. So Hume's main philosophical concern in the inquiry was to explain how the human mind works and how it is that our minds get to latch on to the reality outside of us. His starting point, in common with his predecessors John Locke and George Berkeley, was empiricism. And one element of empiricism is the idea that when we come into the world, the mind's just a blank slate or tabula rasa, as it's sometimes called. So, of course, while we all have at least the capacity to learn how to think when we're born, we don't have any of the ingredients for thinking yet. Um, and that's partly because we have no ideas, as Hume would call them, or concepts with which to do any thinking. Um, if you want to think about sheep, you need to have the idea or concept of a sheep in your head, and you don't get born with the idea of a sheep, right? That's something that you acquire by looking at some sheep or pictures of sheep or whatever. So one of the starting points of empiricism is this idea that all of our ideas are developed as a result of experience. So I only have the idea of blue, or as I say, the idea of sheep, or the idea of the number two, because my experience of the world furnishes me with that idea. So here's one way to put one of Hume's central concerns. Take any belief that you have, any belief you like. That belief is kind of part of the furniture of your mind. It's in your head. Um, a belief's like an idea, uh, your beliefs are beliefs about sheep or trees or whatever, they represent the world as being a certain way, but they're a bit different to ideas because, so you can imagine a unicorn, you're having the idea of a unicorn in your head, but imagining a unicorn is different to believing that unicorns exist, and Hume thinks that when you have a belief, you have an idea, but it's a particularly lively or vivacious idea. So that's the difference between beliefs and ideas, difference between imagining and believing, if you like. So there are two really important and related questions you might ask about that item of mental furniture, that belief that you just picked on. One is, how did it get there? And I think that's the main question that Hume's interested in. And the second is, what grounds or reasons do you have for thinking that belief is really true? So now Hume divides the objects of belief, the things that the beliefs are about, into two categories. And this is often known as Hume's fork, but it's only a two-pronged fork. The first prong is what he calls relations of ideas. So uh, it's best shown, I guess, with examples. So you might believe, quite rightly, that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, or that navy blue is darker than yellow, or that if John is a bachelor, then he's unmarried. Now, th those beliefs, you might think, are sort of beliefs about the world, but Hume wants to say they're not really beliefs about the world, they're just beliefs about our ideas. So we need experience to furnish us with the ideas that the beliefs are about, triangles, navy blue, um, yellowness, whatever. Uh, but once we have the ideas, Hume's thought is we can tell just by inspecting and relating together those ideas that the beliefs must be true. So we can know these a priori. Our justification for those beliefs doesn't come by going out and looking around in the world. Uh, it comes from reflecting on the nature of our own ideas. So those beliefs aren't justified by experience. They're justified just by the fact that you're putting these ideas together and you can see that they fit together in the right kind of way. So Hume's thought is, these aren't really beliefs about the world at all, they're just beliefs about our ideas. So there don't need to be any triangles out there in nature for it to be true that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. That's something that's just true about our ideas. So that's the first prong of Hume's fork, that's relations of ideas. Second prong of the fork is what Hume calls matters of fact, which is basically anything to do with the world out there. So actually he divides matters of fact into two categories. The first is uh, things that you come to believe on the basis of your current experience or your memory. So um, I currently believe that there's a camera pointing at me, and I believe that because I can see it in front of me. I'm having an experience of the camera, or as Hume puts it, an impression. 
And my belief that I've got the camera in front of me um, is just kind of directly coming from that experience. That's kind of not very interesting for Hume because the mechanism between getting from the experience to the belief is pretty straightforward. And he thinks memory is similar, so tomorrow I might remember having had a camera pointing at me today. Uh, and again, I'm kind of getting that fairly directly from experience. I'm just dredging it up from my memory rather than just from straightforwardly from my sensation, from having my eyes open. Um, the second category of beliefs in matters of fact, though, is the category that Hume's really interested in. Um, it's all our other beliefs that we have about the world, which is basically almost all of them. Almost everything I believe about the world is not something that I'm remembering or that I'm now currently experiencing. Um, and it's those beliefs that get us through our day-to-day -day lives. So I believe that the sun will rise tomorrow. I believe that that camera is not about to turn into a rabid lion and attack me. Um, I believe that the cup of tea that I just made a couple of minutes ago is now too hot to drink. So if I were to drink it, that would be a bad idea because it would burn my tongue and so on. So pretty much all of our dealings with the world really are based on these beliefs that aren't about what's currently present to our senses or are retained in our memory. So question that Hume's really interested in, how do those beliefs get into our mind? What are they? They look like they're inferred from something. You infer that the sun will rise tomorrow from something else. It's not as it were, you can't go into the future and observe it happen. You're inferring it from something. So question, wants, question Hume wants to know where those beliefs come from. What's the nature of that inference and what's the basis of the inference? What are we inferring that the sun will rise tomorrow, whatever, from? So Hume spends quite a lot of time in the inquiry working out the answer to that question. And as we'll see, he then deploys that answer in answering a bunch of other questions, in particular the ones that we're going to talk about, the nature of causation, the problem of free will, and whether or not we should believe in miracles.